Opera may not be the most common type of classical music that you have experienced. Perhaps it's the length of the show or that it's sung in a different language. Western New York has an active opera scene. Meet one of the pillars who's retiring after leading a company for 37 years. For Tim Kennedy, it all started with the piano and being involved with the church in his hometown of Philadelphia. His father was superintendent of Sunday school and being part of the church was a must. However, over time, he was able to deepen his love of music and really allowed it to flourish in high school through a discovery program. We had free ticket for this discovery program. So I said, well, let me check this out. I don't remember my first opera. Everybody says, what's your first opera? I don't remember. Absolute catharsis. I went in there, I was taken. The pageantry, singing, acting, costumes, all of theater, absolutely fell in love with it. After college, it was off to the dream of being an opera singer. Kennedy had opportunities to sing in Rome and sang with Porgy and Bess in the late 1980s. But being a musician, especially a classically trained opera singer, was not going to be easy. The odds are often stacked against you in needing to win the right auditions to fast track your career. And as Kennedy continued, he got to a point and had a moment of self-reflection. Maybe around 35, 36, I said, what do I do now? And then uh, I wanted to continue with opera. And I said, well, maybe this is where I belong. So I started Buffalo Opera Unlimited. Our mission statement says that we only deal with local and regional singers. Over time, the company grew and they were able to change the way they put on shows by hiring a full orchestra, including costumes and much more. And over the last 20 years, Kennedy has been able to see his group take on more traditional operas at a grander scale and more ambitious operas like Silent Night by Kevin Putz, a story about a short-lived battle from World War I and Puccini's Madama Butterfly. The tragic love story that takes place in Japan of the early 1900s. So over the years, Kennedy's company has gone from small semi-stage productions to fully staged operas that captivate audiences through acting, music, and costumes. 37 years ago, if you told Kennedy this would be the company he's built with the support of his wife, Ellen, and his board of directors over the years, he had one simple answer. Never. I mean, I was so involved in doing what it takes to put on a particular production. I, would ne I never knew it would grow, grow like this. It's amazing. I'm very happy about that. So as he prepares to officially retire from the company he started, he'll take on the title of Artistic Director Emeritus and pass the reins on to the next person who will carry on this legacy of opera in Buffalo. But now for the most challenging question of how does Kennedy want to be remembered for his work? If I can help them in that field, opera singers especially, because I know how difficult it is to have a career, if I can help, if I'm remembered for that, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. And to celebrate the remarkable accomplishments and career of Tim Kennedy, a celebration will be held on Friday, October 7th at the Lafayette Hotel at 7 p.m. Tickets are available for the event, and we'll have a link where you can purchase them in this story on WGRZ.com.